And this is why you see the, the, you know, in the ads, you see like your typical nature guy, you know, your typical, it, it's, it's a lone white guy in these $400 boots on top of a hill with a, with a walking stick overlooking the mountains. He's all on his own. He, he's surveying, you know, he's surveying it all. But, you know, how are they going to relate to that? You know, they're going to have to relate to something more like the mom and the dog and grandma bringing up the rear and the ex-wife down there waiting angry and, and everybody's out there together doing something together that's, uh, that they could, you know, that's easy to do but doesn't take, you know, all day to do it. And really, um, you don't have to promote bird watching per se to Latinos uh, and still get them out and involved in nature because um, with issues like diabetes, where uh, their doctors are constantly telling them you need to go outside and do a little exercise. And when there's not too many things to let, to take that video game away from the kid so that they could do something that's a little bit more fun, I mean, you, what other thing could you do where grandma and the little kids can go outside and both get exercise and uh, not get bored of each other? It's usually something con concerning the outdoors. And so um, what it comes down to is what everybody's been doing, and there's been a concerted effort to do that for, for a while already which is um, the advertising, you know, advertise in English and Spanish. It's obvious, um, you know, it's better, as I've seen before, as I've seen on, through experience, to put in somebody there that sounds like them, that looks like them. It helps um, advertising with big, happy, smiling family groups. Uh, that's always really good. Uh, and so you want to let people know that if they're coming to your site or if you're trying to... Uh, get to somebody's site. Let's say you're a photographer and you want to reach out to somebody. You really do, you know, when people get together here, you have to spend at least an hour hanging around doing the small talk before you actually get down to business. And you can't just kind of walk in there and say, okay, I'm going to need the, you know, set me up with a blind and this and that. You know, if they don't like you, they're not going to deal with you. And the only way they're going to like you is you go through all the trouble of showing a little bit of respect and just being cordial and sit down and let's tell each other our life story. They, who doesn't like to talk about themselves? Um, and so, um, of course, you've got your food-based uh, events. You've got your big festivals. Uh, I've had some luck reaching out, mostly because of my hunting and fishing background, but, you know, gun shows, hunting expos, boat shows, um, you know, all of these uh, cultural events that you see, the music stuff. I mean, there's places where you can get the message out to those people and find people who are what I call spark plugs that'll, that'll fire up their buddies. And, um, of course, you can never go wrong with teachers. You can never go wrong reaching out to students. This is um, one of our uh, volunteer programs uh, where we got a bunch of kids to make birdhouses, and in particular woodpecker houses, because many of them lived in these old neighborhoods, old uh, wooden structures, and they all, uh, sim at least several kids have the same complaint about woodpeckers causing damage to their house. And what do you do about woodpeckers? And so we said, well, why don't we build a bunch of woodpecker houses and see if we can just discourage the woodpeckers from killing your, you know, from destroying your house and then dis and discourage their parents from killing them because some, some of those things, that's what would happen. They'd kill the woodpecker, but it would just come, another woodpecker would come and take its place. That's how it is. And so these kids learned a lot about it. Um, you take children out and uh, get them to get their hands dirty. And, I mean, there's so much of a loss of experience now with kids. And growing up in these towns, that we were... Less than 100 years ago, it was 90% rural. It is now more than 90% urban. And these, these kids grow up knowing very little about nature. Um, of course, they're all trained and they're all, uh, they're, they're all pretty proficient in dinosaurs and African mammals and stuff like that. But they know nothing about the local flora and fauna. And so there are places that are set up like that. And this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at those faces and look at the face talking to them. Yeah, uh, there are schools down here that are 80% English challenged. That's the words that they're using, 80% English challenged. Basically means you can't be a teacher unless you know Spanish. And um, a lot of these kids are coming straight, or at least first generation, or, or just became Americans, or just starting out their school years. And so they're, they're still learning English. And so you have to be able to kind of answer their questions. And eventually, you get so much participation, you get uh, so many kids fired up about learning about where they live and what they, you know, what they have down here that uh, uh, becomes rather rewarding. And so when we're able to, uh, to provide programs and um, just make, I guess, uh, 
start thinking about what is it that other people of other abilities, other ages, you know, other backgrounds need. What is it, what is it going to take to make them feel comfortable and include them? And that's really the thing. It's inclusion. Um, you, can, you know, I never thought that bird watching was, you know, uh, a white hobby. I didn't think that at all. I just thought that maybe, you know, the locals here just didn't get it. And uh, uh, they were too busy hunting and fishing. But after being involved in birding, you know, long enough, I started to realize there is not, there really isn't too many people, let's say, of color uh, involved in, in our hobby. But they're out there. And I think a lot of it had to do, or does have to do with, uh, perhaps they just don't feel too comfortable and maybe not feel too included when they come into a group of 40, uh, let's say, Anglo birders, and they're the only little black kid or they're the only little Mexican kid that's in there. They're going to feel a little bit left out. And so these programs, you know, uh, the more that we do these types of programs, the more that people have been, are seeing each other in, in these pictures, uh, people start to, to uh, come, come on out. And I think that education is really what it's all about. And uh, we have a, a really good time doing it. Uh, I have information, those numbers that I showed you a little while ago. Uh, I do have all the websites for some of those numbers that show, you know, uh, what are these... Um, uh, when I was mentioning here, let's see, the, uh, as far as how many people gather, uh, Hispanic households, um, the numbers from the census group, and uh, so on. And i um, be happy to share those. I have about 20 copies of those for you. And so uh, I thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, of course, uh, I'll be here all day, and, and I, I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.